everyone, it's Gina Kay from Gina Kay Designs and welcome to Stampin' Chat. Tonight we're going to be playing with some an, another box that I designed and we're going to make a gift card holder. I think it's going to be really fun and I really like these kinds of crafts that you can use for other things other than just Christmas and Hanukkah. So a gift card holder is great for any time of the year and we're going to make a fun one using some different colors, some colors I haven't used for a while. And I'm going to let you guys pick the yellow because I want to do something in a yellow tone. I also want to do something in a plum tonight. So I hope you guys will help me with that. So if you have no picture, just try going out and coming back in because um, it's looking like it's working okay here on our end. Well, so I just saw a great quote on Facebook a little while ago. And um, this kind of I don't know. It's it, it's a good one because I know everybody's going through lots of stuff right now. A lot of us are stuck at home, safe at home. And, um, you know, we're trying to get through the holidays and it's a little weird this year. Right. So I saw this quote that said, um, life may not be the party we hope for, but while we're here, we might as well dance. And uh, so that's what we need to do. We need to just kind of let our hair down and have a little bit of fun tonight. I was uh, kind of thinking about um, the topic of forgiveness. And I think this is a big theme in my life. I tend to dwell on the bad decisions and the bad things that I've personally said or done in the past. And I let them kind of affect my life now, just bad things that have happened. And I really am working on trying to go forward and learn not just forgiveness of others. Of course, we all should do that. And we tend to do that more than we do for ourselves. So that's my topic tonight, forgiving yourself. And uh, forgiving yourself, you need to forgive yourself for not knowing what you didn't know before you learned it. And that's a big deal and a big thing to think about, that you didn't know certain things, so you reacted based on what you knew. And now that you know better, you can do better, but you need to forgive yourself. It's kind of like punishing your future for the mistakes of your past, and we shouldn't do that. So forgiving yourself is the greatest gift that you can give to yourself. So that should be all of our gifts to ourselves this holiday season. All right, so I'm going to do a gift card holder, and I want to show you a little gift card that I picked up. So this is a Barnes & Noble gift card, and I really like this one because it had all these really cool colors in it, and I figured I could do... Um, you know, any one of these colors and it would coordinate with this gift card. That's kind of how I pick my colors. Whatever the gift card is, I like to kind of go with that theme. And if there are certain colors that you like, for example, if you go to Starbucks or you go to Barnes and Noble or you go to any place like that, they usually have a variety of different gift cards styles that you can pick from. So this was one that I thought really would look cute with Plum Punch. Isn't that a nice color combination with Plum Punch? I like the way it picks up the plum in this more pink book and this purple book. So I'm going to go with Plum Punch. Now, to cut my cardstock for this, you're going to be able to use an 8.5 by 11 sheet of cardstock, and you're going to be able to get two gift card holders out of one sheet of cardstock. So I'm going to start by cutting my first one out here and you're going to cut it five inches so you can get two of them right because you can go five inches and then there's certainly enough left over to do another five inches and then you're going to turn it and cut it at six inches so this box is a five inch by six inch template now, the template for this box, you guys are going to have to forgive me a little bit because I am going to be a little late getting this template into our group. As I told you guys in our group, our store, we had an employee test positive for COVID-19 and pretty much everybody worked with her. So we had to send almost our entire staff, except two people, home for 14 days. So we are actually now starting week two 
of quarantine. And um, so it's just Tom and I working and Debbie and Natalie from customer service. So we're all a little bit slower than our amazing shipping team, but they should all be back at the end of this week. Okay, so I will be, I'll do my best to get this template in as soon as possible, but you might want to write down these measurements now, just in case you want to just start making it right away, or you can always watch the replay. Okay, so once again, the template, the piece of cardstock measures six inches by five inches. Now you're going to turn it to the six inch length, and you're going to score on the half inch mark. So I'm going to start on the half inch mark. Okay. You're going to score on the two and three quarter inch mark. You're going to score on the three and one quarter inch mark. And then you're going to score on the five and a half inch mark. Okay. Then you're going to turn the cardstock and you're going to score on the half inch mark. You're going to score, let's see here, you're going to score at four and a half inches, and you're going to score at four inches. So that is your basic pattern that you're going to do. Now, this is very similar to the box of cards that we made. It's just much smaller. So you can see, if you can see this box, okay, I don't know, can you see that pretty clearly, Tom? The lines in the box? Yes. Okay. So you can see the gift card fits perfectly inside there. So that's what we're going for. Now, we're going to do this one more time. And this way I can tell you the measurements again. But this time, we're going to emboss our cardstock first. So if you're going to do something like embossing, I highly recommend, or even stamping, you're going to make a pattern, I highly recommend that you do that first before you actually start doing the score lines. Because once you do the score lines, you're not going to be able to get that pattern down into the lines. So we're going to start with that. So let me find a little piece of paper here that I can work on and brighten things up just a hair. Okay, there we go. So we're going to start with our embossing magic pad, and I'm going to run the embossing magic pad all over the surface of this piece of cardstock. Then I'm going to get my Misty, and you'll never guess what stamp set I'm going to use. <laughs> well, of course, I'm going to use this gorgeous holiday tapestry. I'm excited because now this one is back in stock, and I know a lot of you have been looking for this one, this particular one. So I want to make this pretty busy. So what I'm going to do is, oh, this is really full of embossing powder. I did not do a good job cleaning this stamp. So if you have stamps that aren't sticking really well, all you have to do is take them to the sink, wash them with warm, soapy water, and then if you have Versamark all over your stamp, what I do is I take a little Dawn dish detergent and I scrub it with an old toothbrush. And I've, I've already told them, Tom, I don't use your toothbrush. Tom's back. Yay. Okay, so I'm going to use my, um, my Misty Corner and put that in the corner. And that will get my cardstock away from the edge because this is a huge stamp and I want to make sure that I can get it kind of draped around like that. And I want it to go outside. So if it was up in this corner, it wouldn't be able to go outside. So by using the misty corner, you get it away from the, um, the top and the sides. All right, so let's see. So this is a six inch piece. If you want, you can take a ruler, since you know that this is six inches, and you can make sure that your stamp doesn't extend beyond three inches. This way you can just flip the cardstock around and stamp it a second time. All right, I'm gonna use some Versamark ink for this. I'm gonna ink up this stamp really well. I tried to wear plum today. 
Gosh, I haven't been to a store in forever. And I'm, uh, do you just get sick of your clothes after a while? I am so sick of my shirts. I, I just want to get a couple new long sleeve t shirts. And I just haven't been to a store in forever. So I need to, well, I could order online. I guess that's the best way to do it. I guess people, you know, they're being really good about letting you send things back if they don't fit and stuff like that. So, all right, so I'm really putting some pressure on this. I'm using my Chucky tool. And if you're new to Gina K Designs, this is a tool made by my friend, Chuck Meadows. He made it out of a curtain finial and a furniture pad and he glued them together. And uh, he is helping me with uh, my arthritis issues, <laughs> making it very easy for me to put a lot of pressure on my Misty. You're tired of your pajama tops, Donna? <laughs> yeah. I know for a while there, it wasn't even worth, you know, putting real clothes on. But now that Tom and I are over there packing orders, I do actually have to get dressed. <laughs> I don't want to scare Debbie and Natalie. Okay, so I'm going to emboss this. I love the idea of gold on um, on this plum. I think that is a really, really pretty combination for the holidays. <laughs> I can start to see some of your comments now because Tom's back. I couldn't scroll before. Alrighty. Now you can also do a box like this with pattern paper, although it will be a little more flimsy unless you use a pattern cardstock or you create your own with stamps. You can always do that. There's so many great, you know, you could do snowflakes, things like that, and make a beautiful pattern cardstock, a lightweight cardstock. Use our 80 pound white. Okay. So that looks pretty good. Oh, isn't that pretty on the plum? I don't use plum punch enough, and it's it, just a gorgeous color. Okay, so I'm going to flip it around, make sure that's dry and I don't smear it. And then I'm going to use the embossing magic pad a second time because I always put lotion on my hands um, right before I go on. And I uh, don't want any embossing powder to stick to where I touch the cardstock where there might be some lotion. Okay. Get in there. I've done a terrible job of cleaning my stamps after my lives. So this is probably kind of sticky. Okay. Now I'm not too worried if there's a little bit of a gap that falls in the middle of the box. Um, I can always fill that in with some single stamps and I might do that. Let's do that just to make sure we don't have like terrible gaps. All right. But I'm going to also do a little banner going across with a with a greeting on here. So here we go. Looking good. Let's get rid of this again. I've been using so much gold, I think I need a big container like I have of my white. And our, our embossing powder did come back in stock too, so... I know you, a lot of you guys were waiting for some of that because you want to make some of the cards that I've been making. Somebody asked me if embossing powder gets old, that they were having trouble getting their embossing powder to look good. And the answer is absolutely yes. Embossing powder definitely gets old and it stops working as well if it's been sitting around too long. So... If you're struggling at all with your embossing powder, it may not be you. It may be just that the embossing powder is old. All right, so let's just see if there's room in here for like another swish. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm gonna use an acrylic block for this one against my better judgment. <laughs> and I'm gonna use some Versamark here. Now I have used Versamark on this stamp before because I use this for the wreath builder. 
So it should work pretty well. It should be seasoned enough. Okay, so let's do one right here. There we go. Looking good. I'm going to emboss these one at a time because I don't want to mess them up. I don't have my little paintbrush close by. I might have to grab it. We'll see. All right. Really don't want to emboss right over that. See, that's right in that design. So that's going to look good. Let's see. Can we fit another one in there? Might be able to. Ooh, that's going to be really tight. Let's do it. We'll see what happens. Okay, sorry if my head's in the way, but I need to see it. Okay. That'll work. I just didn't want there to be too, too bald of a spot in there. So I think this will make a little bit of a difference depending on where the front of the box lays. How heavy is the paper that I use for putting the, the embossing powder back in the jar? This is just a piece of our Stormy Sky cardstock. So it is a um, 100 pound cardstock, but you can use, you know, whatever you want. You can use a piece of copy paper. It really doesn't matter. Okay, I'm going to do a couple more little spots here. I'm going to do one right here. This I can do together because they are very far from each other. I'm going to do one over here. I love having this little flourish design in this set. It really makes a difference when you want to fill in because it's an image that's already in there. So it really looks nice. Okay. And on this side. All right. Let's emboss those. Yeah, see, doesn't that make a huge difference just filling it in? I think it does. All right, so I'm going to just move that out of the way, and then we're going to score this again. And then we have to cut a little bit, so we need to do a little bit of fancy cutting. Well, not super fancy, just a pair of scissors. I guess that's not too fancy. All righty, move this. And back with the score pal. Now, you can use a score buddy with this because, again, it's pretty small. So if you don't have a score pal, don't worry about it. This isn't a big design. One thing um, I do want to tell you, though, when you're doing this, make sure that your design is face side up. So you're looking at the design. Don't score it this way. You want to actually press the score lines in because we fold away from those divots that we make. Okay, so once again, we're going to go back to those measurements. So we're on the six inch side. Remember, it's five by six. And we're going to score at a half an inch. It feels all bumpy now. <laughs> all right, so we've got that half inch score line there. And I like to score it a few times, you know, really make sure we get it in there. And then we're going to score at two and three quarters of an inch. And then we're gonna score at three and one quarter of an inch. And then we're gonna score at five and a half inches. Okay. Now we're gonna turn it a quarter turn and we're gonna score at the half inch mark. And what I recommend is once you do this one time, do it. Don't do all the fancy stuff. Just do it on a plain piece of cardstock. Do all the cuts and then have that sitting out so that you know. So you don't have to worry. You can just hold that up and go, okay, what are the next measurements? All right, I'm, I'm I scored all that. Now what do I have to do? Okay, half half inch, four inches, and four and a half inches. Having a template is great. Okay, so. Four and a half inches, I'm going backwards, and four inches. 
Alrighty. Now, I have all those score lines in there and you can probably see them. So now it's time to cut. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this whole box off here. Okay, so let me get my good Tim Holtz scissors out. Tim has these long nose scissors. I love these. I also have these smaller ones for ribbon cutting and things like that. But when I'm doing this kind of stuff, I love these long scissors. And they're not serrated, so they're very, they're really extra smooth. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this whole section right off here. up to that score line. And then I'm gonna cut this whole section. If you can't see it, you know, you can always fold it to make sure you can see it a little better because it, it does become a little harder to see when it's all embossed and it's fancy. Okay, there we go. So we've got that section cut off right there. Now we're gonna cut this tiny little box right off here, okay? So we're gonna cut that to the score line and we're gonna cut that off to the score line. Why do you use your smart pad and not your embossing? I just grab whatever is close by. Um, I use mine too, you'll see me use mine too. I just have um, both of them and I, I like them both. I really do. Okay, so now I'm going to cut this box off right here. Alrighty. Okay, now, now that I have all of those cut and I have this flap cut, I'm going to cut down onto this flap right here. Okay. And then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut this box off of this corner. So when I do my templates, what I do is I draw out the template, I draw all the lines on there and I tell you what lines to score and what lines to cut. And they're different color lines. So I'm gonna cut here up to the score line and here up to the score line. That makes flaps. And then I'm gonna cut here up to the score line. Okay, so that's all the cutting I have to do. All right, now up here at the top, you can round these corners. If you don't have a corner rounder, you can cut them on an angle like that and then like that. Okay, but I'm gonna use a corner rounder just cause I think it, it looks kind of cute. So I'm going to, now when you use a corner rounder with something like this, you need to get in there. So you're gonna have to fold it and you're gonna have to fold that flap down out of the way to just free that up. This way you can get that whole corner into the corner rounder. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna fold that in and I'm gonna fold that flap out and then I'm gonna round that corner. That was not a good rounded corner. Let's see if I can get it in there. If I can't round it, I will just trim that little tiny little off of there. There we go. Okay. So now the top is rounded and that's what's going to fold over. Okay. Now I'm going to fold all of the other parts of this. I just want to fold all on your score lines just so everything is kind of pre-folded. Okay, looking good. Now I'm going to fold these two flaps under here like that. You see that? And then I'm going to fold that down. I'm going to tape those together. Okay. All right, so I have some score tape here. Now you can use any kind of tape. This is not score tape, this is terrific tape. You can use score tape. If you have score tape, you can use the red line tape 
or you can use the Gina K Designs Terrific Tape. Um, it's all really good. I don't want you to run out and buy new tape if you don't have to, but I want you to use the tape that you have. All right, so I am going to put more than one piece here because I want this to go all the way to the edge. So I'm going to put one here and then I'm going to put the other one next to it. And then I'm going to peel that off. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Just two pieces. I'm actually not using my sticky scissors. Somebody told me I really needed to use some goo gone on them and clean them up and they were right couldn't even open them anymore so i have to clean them so i'm using these these are also tim holt scissors i have a lot of tim scissors because i really like the quality of his scissors there's a lot of good scissors too, though i also like christopher allen's scissors the bruce monroe scissors they're really good too okay so i'm gonna fold these down and then I'm going to fold them over and then I'm going to one side at a time to make sure that I get nice contact. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to go over the top and do this side and then this flap like that. Okay. And then you see what I have left is a cute little box that's the perfect size for a gift card. Now, if you want, you can slip this on the inside. It's totally up to you. It'll work either way. That might look a little better. Let's do that. We'll slip it on the inside. All right, so that means we're gonna put our tape here and here. That does make it easier. So I'm gonna put it right along the outer edge. Actually, I'm gonna put it up here because I really want it to be tight. There we go. That's a big piece of tape. And I'm gonna do a little bit more. Now the terrific tape, one thing I like about it is it's easy. You could just tear it. Um, I know the red line tape you do have to cut. I think score tape you can just tear as well. You don't even really have to put tape on that bottom panel because that will stay in there as long as this panel is sticky. So that's what we're gonna do. You really wanna burnish that tape down there too because when it's on embossing powder, Sometimes it'll pull up. Okay, here we go. There we go. Okay. And now we can put our little gift certificate right in there, gift card right in there. It fits perfectly in there. And then we can close that up. Isn't that cute? That's so fun. Such a fun little box. I love it. Okay. So oh, I hear see people talking about insulin. <laughs> What's going on out there? I look up and I see all kinds of conversations going on that I'm not part of. <laughs> okay, so now what I thought would be really pretty is to, I mean, you could just leave it just like this and put some pretty gold ribbon around it and it would be beautiful. But I thought it would be kind of fun to put a snowflake on it. What do you think? Like a snowflake and then a greeting. We'll put the greeting on like that. I think that would be pretty. We could also put some ribbon around it. Let me see what kind of ribbon I have. I have this Gina K Designs fancy gold and white ribbon. Wouldn't that be pretty? Yeah, I think so. Don't worry about missing the instructions. I'm going to have them in our um, Facebook group. 
So I'm going to cut this kind of short. It's not going to connect all the way. Well, I guess it is, but I don't need it to. So if you cut it short, don't worry about it because we're going to put a greeting over that box. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Where'd my thing go? Oh, no. I can't find my remote. Here it is. Oh, my goodness. Things get lost so easily when you have everything everywhere. All right, there we go. So, so what I'll do here is I will add a little bit of um, Gina K Designs dot adhesive to this ribbon. I'm just going to put it right on the end of this ribbon. Did I get any on there? Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to put it right in the center here. I want to make sure. Oh, I love that white with the plum. It's just so pretty. Okay. And then I'm going to cut this just a little shallow. I don't want it to overlap. And then I'm going to add a little bit more tape to this. You can also use the terrific tape or if you have score tape, whatever you have. Got a little bit of a revolt here. What's wrong? You're covering up the embossing. I know, but it's you can still see all the embossing. It's so pretty. You can still see it. <laughs> well, this is extra. You don't have to do this part. This is just what I like. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to put my snowflake on there. So this is from the Snowflake Trio. This was part of the kit. And um, I really like these snowflakes. They're nice and big and bold. I'm going to tape right over the snowflake, just like this. And then I'm going to lay it on top of the box. So we have a revolt going on. I apologize. <laughs> okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp in gold. I'm going to stamp on this. Now this is part of the Master Layouts 3 die set. So I cut one of these. It's this die right here. It has stitching on it. Um, and I am going to pop that right onto the box with the for you. Yes, a small bow and a tiny tag is all you need. That's true. But you can take it a step further if you want, like I am. And uh, add a little more zing to it. Okay. So let me find the greeting I want to use. So I want to use the for you, a gift for you. And hopefully that'll fit on there. Yes, it will. Now I'm not going to like hem and haw over getting this straight because it's a circle and I can just turn it if it's not straight, right? I spent a lot of time trying to line that up one time and then I realized <laughs> that's right. You guys can create it any way that you want. If you don't like this design, you can create it your way. You know, I wonder, too, if a plum punch circle would have been better in the center. Maybe. But I like the white snowflakes so much. Okay. So my good friend Karen yelled at me because I always talk about my clothespins, and then I never have them close by. So she gave me clothespins that she brought from home. And I appreciate that, Karen, if you're watching. You have to be careful not to close pin right over what you're working on. To close pin. All right, here we go. Definitely easier to emboss <laughs> with a close pin when you're doing something this small than to burn your fingers, that is for sure. Ooh, that's pretty. That is so pretty.
And I think I'm going to pop that up. No, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just tape it right on there. And then you just have the snowflake legs sticking out. And if you notice, these, this snowflake was one that I did in my one of my previous videos where I did a little uh, gray wood graining on it. <laughs> Are there other YouTubers here? Who's here? Who am I missing? I barely look up, so tell me who's here. So I can say hi. All right. There we go. There we go. Yeah, the recipient can just tear the ribbon off and you could also, if you wanted to, you could you could have a little ribbon kind of going through it and you could hang it on the tree too, like a little, little gift on the tree. <laughs> so there we go. And there's the back. That's what it looks like. Okay, so we'll do one your way, you guys. We'll do one more. But my big question is, which color do I use? Do I use prickly pear or do I use honey mustard? I think with the gold embossing, I think either one would look really pretty, but I, I rarely, I used honey mustard a lot and I think prickly pear would give it a neat look. What do you guys think? I'm waiting for, oh, honey mustard is the first comment. Hmm, maybe I'm wrong in what I'm thinking. Honey mustard, honey mustard, prickly pear, oh no. I wish there was a poll option where people could just push a button real quick and vote. All right. Okay, so it's pretty even. So I'm going to go eeny, meeny, miny, mo. catch a tiger by the toe. <laughs> Do tigers really have toes? They have toe beans like cats. Oh, I see way more prickly pear. All right, I'm not going to do the thing. I'm going to do the prickly pear. Now, remember, don't, don't be upset if I didn't pick your color. Um, you can always make one in honey mustard. You can always make one without the snowflake. This is not limited to what I'm doing here. Okay, so we'll do this one just a little bit different this time. Let's cut this out first. We're gonna cut it at five inches. And this is prickly pear. It's a neat yellow. It's um, definitely a beautiful holiday color. So by six, I must cut it wrong. There we go. Okay. So I think you guys like me using the holiday tapestry on this. So I'll, I'll do that, but you know, Snowflakes would be really pretty too. Oh, any Gina K color would be beautiful. That's so sweet. Thank you. Let's do another one. And we're gonna keep this one really simple. We're, we're just gonna stamp. And we're not gonna worry about doing all that snowflake stuff on the top. Okay, so we will stamp this. <laughs> so again, I'm using Versamar. So if you tuned in late, you're going to get to see the score lines one more time. And also, if you tuned in late, I want you guys to know that my um, template, hear me, my template will be late. So if you run over to the Facebook group looking for it, it's not going to be there yet because I haven't designed it yet. I spent a little bit of time this morning before I went to work figuring out the measurements that I would need for this. And then I worked all day packing orders. We did good today too. We got 171 orders out and we moved from November 20th all the way to November 24th. So that was a good little quiet period of time, which helped us really feel the days go by. Now, I know a lot of you ordered the new stamps from the kit and those are going to take us a little longer to get out because there are a lot of orders for that. But the good news is a lot of our staff is going to be able to come back on Friday. Quarantine will be done and uh, we will be able to have some of our some of our wonderful staff back. So that'll be great. And what they can do is miraculous. They can get 
they can get so many orders out. It's crazy. All right, so I'm, ooh, is that gold really pretty on the prickly pear? I should make one of these boxes using the gold cardstock. Gold metallic cardstock would be really pretty. And remember, you know, you might want to give little Valentine's gift cards, maybe to your kids or your grandkids or somebody in your life. And so you could start working on these and using heart stamps and pinks and reds. We're not limited to just these holiday, this, you know, Christmas and Hanukkah colors. And try it with a lot of those fun shapes, those stamps. Like some of you um, received an incentive called Enjoy. Ooh, I can't think of what it's called. But it's got these really bold graphic kind of flowers and circles. And that would be so fun to make a gift card holder using that. Okay. I didn't use the embossing magic pad again because my skin is so dry that it's already dried out. <laughs> It dried out again. I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> okay. So here we go. It's like once you make the first one. Oh, I'm sorry. Back out a little bit. I'm sorry. That was too close. I didn't realize that. Here we go. Is that better? It's a good thing I looked up at your comment. I saw it right at the right time. I'm sorry if I was too close. All right, this is live. This is happening live. So anything can happen, including being too close. All right, I have a little thing there. I need to get my little paint brush. So this is a watercolor paintbrush that I bought. Very nice watercolor paintbrush. I bought it for watercoloring. I don't watercolor. So that was... Now it's an embossing powder remover paintbrush, but it's a very good one. <laughs> All righty, here we go. Now I don't even know necessarily that I need to fill these all in, but if I want to fill them all in, now I know where to fill them in because of the last one, so I can do them all at one time. So let's do that next. I, I love this. I love this color combination. Isn't it something? There, there is not a new incentive stamp set. <clears throat> we had to sub one out while we were waiting for a restock. Um, cause these, the incentive sets are subject to availability, but we always have cute ones and we have a little backup one that we keep in case we run out. And so we had to use that for a few orders and it would be a great one for this. Now, do I need to do another one here? Ooh, yeah, I probably should. Okay, that's really tight in there, but it fits, so I'm happy with it. We'll do one there. There's a lot of great watercolor people out there. Oh my goodness. Christina Warner, Dawn from W Plus Nine is amazing. Kathy Rakusen is amazing. Who am I missing? Karen Hightower. Arjita, Arjita Singh, so many great watercolor people. I know I'm missing people, so please don't be offended if I didn't say you. Okay. And now I'm gonna just finish embossing those, fill in pieces. Oh, the auction? Yeah, we had a really, that was really fun. And we had, um, we have a winner who won the auction. 
and she's going to bring a friend and we are going to have our own little personal stamp and chat. I'm excited about that. For those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, there was an auction for a family from our industry who um, the husband, the dad, they have quite a few children. Um, you guys may know her. It's um, Elizabeth Karchner from Dear Lizzie. She lost her husband very unexpectedly and it was quite tragic. So we had an auction to help them and um, I auctioned off a kit that I had, one last kit and um, an hour of personal Stampin' Chat. And then we also auctioned a Stampin' Chat with me and Jennifer McGuire. So we had somebody bid on those and won, and that's really fun. So we're excited about that. Okay, so the first one we're going to do is we're going to score on the half inch here. This is the six inch side. Okay, so this is six inches. All righty. And then we're going to score at the two and three quarter inch mark. I always do it a couple times just to really make sure I get a good dent. Um, then three and a quarter. This one is, I, I love this color. And then five and a half. Okay. Then we're going to turn it, quarter turn. We're going to do the half inch mark. Then we're going to go backwards from five to four and a half. And then to four. Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I know people, people, everybody has their own opinions. So it looks good. It's okay. It's okay. You can have your opinion. I don't blame you. I, uh, I, I know what I like. So, okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this whole box off right here again. Alrighty, and cut that off. Then I'm going to cut this box off down here in the corner. It's good that these boxes don't have any embossing on them, so I don't have to worry. Then I'm going to make a little notch here up to the score line, and one here up to the score line, and one here up to the score line. Then I'm going to cut this notch off, this corner. And I'm going to cut this corner off. <laughs> and then I'm going to cut that little flap down and that little flap down. And that is it. So now we'll round these corners and we will, let's see here. I got to fold this like that to get into this corner. So I'm gonna round this corner. And then same thing over here. I need to fold that in and that flap down and I'm gonna round this corner. This was the one that gave me trouble last time. So hopefully I'll do it right this time. I did it wrong again. So I'm gonna cut that little nub off. There we go. Okay, I think it's cause I, I missed a little of this here, just cutting that down so i'll just do that all right and then we're going to fold on all the score lines no it's really okay if you guys like doing it a different way do it a different way this is all just suggestion right okay so we're gonna put these two together here so i'm gonna put tape on these we're almost done. Wow. This second one always goes so much faster, right? I'm sure you guys know. You guys make stuff all the time, and the first one takes forever. I've heard some people say, it took me all day to make this one card, and then, you know, I made 10 more in a half an hour. <laughs> it's just kind of figuring out what you want to make. That's the, the key and how you want it to look. Which corner rounder is The corner rounder, ooh, I pulled that whole tape right off. The corner rounder that I'm using is, it comes in a two-pack, and it's by EK Success. 
And they do have that at most of your local craft shops. So make sure you try them because we want to support small business. They also have them at most of the bigger online stores. So you can check there as well. All right, so we've got those flaps in. Now we can do this this way and then fold that down or we can tuck it in like we did before. I think we'll do that because that just finishes it off nice. This time I think I'm gonna put tape on both sides though, here and here. I'm gonna cut this one a little bigger this time. And then I'll just trim it right off the edge. And a little bit along the bottom. Because if I'm not gonna wrap any ribbon around it, I don't want it to escape. Well, I hope you guys all had a really nice Thanksgiving for those of you here in the US. We had a very nice Thanksgiving. Rena cooked, which was delightful. She does this thing with her turkey. I can't even believe how good it was. So she takes a stick of softened butter and she mixes a packet of French onion soup mix into it and then puts that all over the outside of the turkey. And I don't think I've ever tasted anything so good. Very, very delightful flavor. Okay. So there is that. That's pretty, huh? You know, and you can use this for something else too. So if you don't want to use this for a gift card holder, that top just slips in like this. Um, and if it doesn't, it could just be that you need to just trim a little bit off of the side of the flap. And I can see my flap. This is the flap that gave me trouble. So I'm going to just trim that down. But you can use this. Another really cool thing to use this for would be to make cards that you put inside that says, this entitles you to one movie date. This entitles you to me doing the laundry for you. You know, like a, little, like a gift it doesn't have to be something that you spend money for, but it can be something that you give of your time. So they can pick a card and redeem it whenever they want. So, so there's the second one. So yes, there's different things that we could do to this to, um, to decorate it. We could just use a little bit of gold cording. Let's see how this looks. So I'm going to, hmm, let's see, I will put it on the top, wrap it around and cross it on the bottom. And I will tie it on the top. So Tom, can you just put your finger here for a second? <laughs> just your finger has to be in, <laughs> nothing else. <laughs> just your finger. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my gosh, I have woken this man up from a dead sleep to do this in the past. I really have. And you know what? He didn't even yell at me. It's a good guy. <laughs> so that's kind of a cute little, um, just simple, like a little gift. The gold cording is really simple. So there are two different ways that you can do these. You can do it all overdone like this one. Or you can do it very simple like this one. <laughs> That's right. Tom made an appearance. <laughs> you know, we do what we have to do, right? I actually think that I'm going to put a couple little sequins on here before I take a picture of it for you guys. So let's zoom in a bit so you guys can see them a little bit better. There we go. If you're watching on TV, they're like six feet by five feet. If you're watching on a big screen, <laughs> if you're watching on your phone, they're like, you know, tiny. So 
little gift card holders. They can also be used for other things. Also those flat chocolate, the Ghirardelli chocolate would fit right in there as well with the gift card. So who doesn't love a little bit of chocolate with their gift? <laughs> All right. Well, five minutes to spare. Oh, look at me. I'm just <laughs> I'm overwhelmed from the day. <laughs> Oh, well, this was so much fun. I hope that you guys enjoyed this tonight. You can make lots of these gift card holders and be all ready for the holidays in no time flat. And gift, gift cards are a great thing to give to people right now because they don't have to worry if something doesn't fit, they have to take it back. They can shop online and uh, it'll give them something to look forward to. So we talked a little bit about forgiving yourself and this quote came up in my memories. This was a quote that I had posted probably 10 years ago and it just fit my theme tonight so well. So I'm gonna tell it to you. View your life with kind sight. Stop beating yourself up about things from the past. Instead of, your, instead of slapping yourself in the forehead and asking yourself, what was I thinking? Breathe and ask yourself the kinder question, what was I learning? Thank you guys so much for being here tonight. I hope you enjoyed tonight's stamp and chat. I will be back on Wednesday night with another project for you. I hope you'll be here too. In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy. I love you all so much and I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.